not so happy that you make it. Because God is here. Hallelujah. I don't know your expectation this morning. But what I'm sure, what I'm sure about is that God will reach out to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. You will not go back the same. Hallelujah. Amen. We've been on a team for the quarter, the believer's position in Christ. The believer's position in Christ. Hallelujah. And we're going to start a something today which will take us for the next four weeks. And that team is elevated to serve in the power of the Holy Spirit. Elevated to serve in the power of the Holy Spirit. We're going to read from the book of Acts. But before I go into that, so that, you know, I know that some people always ask me, accuse me of being, being spirit, too spiritual. Can I say happy Valentine to everybody? Happy Valentine to every one of us. Uh, at least I'm Shashia now. Okay, so let's go back. Can we open our Bible to the book of Acts, chapter 6? Acts chapter 6. We're going to read from verse 1 to 7. Acts chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. Acts chapter 6, verse 1 to 7. Acts 6, 1 to 7, and I read. Now in those days, when the numbers of disciples was multiplying, there arose a murmuring against the Hebrews by the Hellenists, because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Then the twelve summoned the multitudes of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve table. Therefore, brethren, Seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to ministry of the world. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they choose Stephen, a man full of faith, and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Procarius, and Nicodio, and Timor, and Parmenas, and Nicolias, and Priestlia from Nicolia, a Priestlia from Antioch, whom they said before the apostles, and when they have when they had prayed, they laid hands on them, and the word of God spread. And the numbers of disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem. And a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Hallelujah. Like I said, we are starting a new series today. And sometimes, let's say 2008, we did something like this. And if... I could recall it. We, we we went into a series that talked about the dream, the, the diaconess of our dream. But another season has come in which we need to look at this again. Because all of us have agreed that look, we need to bring more Dickens on board. And for this next one week, weeks we are going to look at this series. And we shall be guided by, by this passage that we read this morning. It will help us to navigate through the four weeks. That's Acts chapter 6 from verse 1 to 7. It will help us to navigate through the four weeks. Hallelujah. As we prepare ourselves. We need to do this because we need to get into the mind of God to know what exactly God is saying. Not because we just want to choose the king. You know, if I look at where I'm coming from, when you say Dickin, we know what is involved. 
But in our own here, in the TVCBC, the Victory Community Baptist Church, we need to get ourselves aligned to the mind of God so that we do the correcting and we'll be able to get the correct result. Hallelujah. So for this next four weeks, we're going to look at, we're going to start with the need for deacons in the local church. Then two, we look at the standards, stroke requirement to become a deacon or a deaconess. Then the third week, we're going to look at the role of the local church in deacon selections. And lastly, we're going to look at the power of partnership in the local church ministry. Hallelujah. But this morning, like I said, we are looking at the need for deacons in the local church. What exactly is this term, deacon? I know from some of us, we'll be hearing deacon this, deacon that, deacon this. What exactly is the meaning? When we look at the root word, where we call out the word deacon, it was called out from a Greek word, diakonos, which means to serve or to minister. To serve or to minister. That word, when we look at it critically, we discover the word deacon is a function, not a title. Because that word shows that these people that serve the table, when you look at the meaning critically, it shows that there are people that are full of energy, that move with speed, and that do things quickly. I can also say, there are people that are fleet-footed, people that are smart in doing things. And I've been privileged to be into maybe one or two five-star hotels, especially when they are doing their training, maybe because of the nature of our business in those days when I was working with a company. And I discovered when they are training, those people that serve in their restaurant, the trainer will have to carry tray with a glass cup, with a spoon, and none will fall. And they will be moving fast. I discovered when they carry the table, they don't just carry the table like this. They carry the table like this. They carry it like this. And they move with speed with it. And the thing will be there. And you'll be wondering. And with their high heel, and they will be walking. It's a whole lot of training. A whole lot of responsibility. The time decay is by function not by title. Hallelujah. The first time was in the scripture that the term deacon as a function was mentioned in Philippians chapter 1 verse 1. And as a whole, on the whole, when you look at the term in the scripture, especially in the New Testament, you will discover that the term deacon was mentioned in about 29 times in the scripture, in the New Testament. So it's, it's God's idea, it's God's mind. But we need to understand the function, the responsibility. Why do we need them? Not because we want title. Hallelujah. In the village where I come from, I've met with people that when you say, good morning, sir, or you say, ah, Mr. Kayo, they are duty, they will say, no, Dicky, Kayo, they are duty. If you don't put the king down, it's not complete. Have you ever seen somebody you say, you, 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 maybe you sign something or you write the name and say, Benga Mobola Day, or you put doctor, or you didn't put doctor, I say, come. I hand the doctor. It was not a dash. It's in Nigeria, in the area we belong to, that I say that you, if you don't put engineer, somebody can slap you because of it. Oh, my dear, it's, it's my first name. Even when he's here. And you know where it came from? You know, if you are if you're senior to somebody with one day, it's brother yeah. or auntie. But when I came to the Republic State, my theology was battered. I saw one small boy that we were living together. In fact, the guy gave me a nickname. <laughs> it's, it's small boy. I finished university, I came to serve, he's still in secondary school, and he gave me a nickname. It's then I know. Ah, 
my theology must change. <laughs> and thank God it changed. Please note, Dick Dickin or Dickness is not a fun, it's not a thing of title. It's by function. And let me shock you a little bit. That when you come to the term Dickin, it's not about female, male, or this one that we say Dickin Dicknesses. In the scripture, there's nothing like Dickness. It's not because it's by function. So there's no E, there's no she. So Dickin are. So tomorrow, if I just see mommy, if I say Dicky, please answer me. Okay. Hallelujah. When you look at Romans 16, verse 1, Phoebe, Romans 16, verse 1, was a lady, a woman, and she was being referred to as Dicky. Hallelujah. So that it's not look as if I'm bringing strange theology. You know, in our Baptist circle is the king, Dickness. I know Dickness, and Amun will permit me tomorrow when I say Dicky. Hallelujah. But beyond this, this morning we want to look at the need for Dickens in the local church. Why do we need them? From the passage that we read this morning, we discover there are a lot of challenges that brought about this issue or that brought about the selection of deacons. And that's what we're going to dwell on this morning as we look at the need for deacons in the local church. We'll look at the challenges that happened then and how we will not zero it in to our own context here. Hallelujah. This morning we're going to narrow. We're not going to look at verse 1 to 7, but verse 1 and 2, and I'll read it back to her so that we'll concentrate on this. Verse 1 and 2, that's Acts chapter 6. It said, Now in those days, when the numbers of disciples was, most, was multiplying, there arose a murmuring against the Hebrew by the Hellenists, because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the world and serve table. Hallelujah. From verse 1, the first challenge we would discover is that the challenge of growth in the church. If we just move backward from chapter 6, let's go to chapter 2. That was the time of the Pentecost. After the Pentecost, after the people were saying these people were drunk, and, went, and Peter answered them and were talking about Jesus, talking about, and the scriptures said this. After all those stories, it said 3,000 were added to the church. There was growth. They were somewhere, but in one day, 3,000 was added to them. In chapter 4, after the man and the beauty gave us ill, they also raised questions, they raised doors, and Peter was talking to them and preaching to them, talking to them. The scripture says 5,000 were added to the church. If I got to a point, the scripture said multitude, they lost count, were added to the church. So there was growth. After Jesus left, it was not the same from one point to another. Remember, I said the Holy Spirit must come, and when he come, things will change, and things change indeed. But I want to tell you, growth also comes with challenges. Hallelujah. If you don't put things in place for growth, the same growth can consume everything you have ever achieved. Hallelujah. We need to put the structure, we need to put the system in place. I have no doubt that God has promised us that he's going to increase us in this season of elevation. I have no doubt that it will happen. I see the rain, I see the cloud, I see the coming. But we must put everything together so that as this growth is coming, we'll take care of the growth. So that the growth will not have the adverse effect on us. Hallelujah. Someone, first, someone said, it's good and it's better to prepare for opportunity 
that never come, that opportunity come, and you are not prepared. We want growth. We want to reap Portacot and the world for Christ. And it will come like it came during these people. Stand. During the hell of church, it came. But there's challenges. Increase in the numbers of people. And murmuring started. I want to say to you this morning, beyond the fact that I have no doubt that God is doing something in the church, I so have no doubt that God is doing something in your life. God is taking you ahead, forward, beyond your expectation, in your business, in your working place. But I also need to tell you, even as you expect that thing to happen, please prepare ahead of time. So, that's, so that the same increase, the same progress, the same development will not consume you at the end of the day. It is very, very important. Hallelujah. There was increase. And the scripture says, as a result of this increase that we saw in verse 1, we also discover because there were just more groups of people before, because they belong to the same tribe, because Acts chapter 2, verse 7 and 8 told us that after the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and as they were speaking, people saw them and said, Are these one not Galileans? That is, they belong to the same setting, and they were supposed to be speaking the same language. But they saw these people, and they were, they said, ah, these people are speaking their lang- our own language. It means that before the growth, they were operating a monocultural ministry. They were a group of tribal people. Are you getting it? It's like we have 10 people that start a ministry and they're from the same tribe. If they would choose ESCO, we need not be from them. We need not be from the same language. Hallelujah. And it was like that. And that's why at times I'm being careful when I find myself in a place. To just continue to speak in batting, but you know what in batting means? Okay. Because truly it could be a problem. It could be when you when you are lost, when you are so used to this local this thing, you will know that you are you are hurting somebody. When I was in the level, we went to the library one day. And as we were in the library, I have a friend who work with the immigration service now, one of these big talk. There was a girl, a lady, who was supposed to be reading the library, and she lied, you know, she put her head on the desk. We didn't know that she was reading, she was not sleeping. And the guy just told me, because the guy is an abino, he said, Tanu Lomo, I told him why I told him library. That is, who is this falling now that he's just sleeping in the library? He used the and the guy just raised her head. He said, Sorry, I didn't know that you're here. <laughs> when increase come, when growth come, there's need to change style. They were running monolithi- uh, monocultural ministry. They were Galilean. But other people were coming in. That the scripture when we read it said the Hellenistic Jew. Some would say the gracious Jews were complaining. And they need to change strategy. They need to change the system and the structure so that they can take care of the growth. They need to address this. They need to change the, 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 the style of leadership. They need to take care of the growth that is coming in. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, growth is coming in. Growth is coming in. Nothing will stop it. But we need to prepare ourselves. And one of the ways is to take care of this aspect of the church. These people, they recognized that they need to change their style. And they attended to it. They did it and changed the scheme. And we also need to attend to it. Hallelujah. So they need to bring a new dimension of ministry. People, people of different ideas, they need to bring them in. People that have ability to do great things. They brought them in. Hallelujah. Another thing this morning that we need to look at is this. The challenge of unity of the church community. 
not only that you experience growth, like I said, every growth comes with challenges. And one of the challenges that came in is, this, like I said, the kind of system they run in those days is that, look, if you have, bring. If you have, say, bring the money, we live a communal life. And it got to a point that when they say, okay, go and distribute food for people, some will not have. Even when they're on the queue, you know that style? When you say, please serve everybody one, 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 start from the front, you will discover it's possible, whether by arithmetic or by, I don't know, some in the front might not get, the people at the back will have. Hallelujah. There is instinct in us that when we know somebody, we try to favor the person. And she was going on then. And these people had to complain. The analytic Jews. The analytic Jews are those, or the great saints Jews, are those people who have imbibed the culture of the Greek by way of living outside the Palestine or by way of intermarrying. It's possible they have missed blood. Some is could just go be, they stay outside. And they came back to Palestine. And those in house that were in government, when they were sharing, we go and share food to these people. When they share, they would say, okay, let's take care of the home base first before outside that man. Let's inside eat first. And it's supposed to be church. They were supposed to be Christian. So the unity was stretching. People begin to murmur. They started talking. And it's also real here too. It was real to these people. It's a problem that was real in the church. I'm very sure, let me tell you, look, it's real here because I've also experienced it. One of the recent programs we have one day, I just said, okay, let me go to the multipurpose because we have extension. When I got there, somebody just told me, Pastor, they did not give me food. I said, Ma, I will go and bring the food for you. It's possible. By omission or commission or by whatever. And people will feel bad. Because we are in church, we are supposed to share things together in love. No matter how small it is. No matter how big, all of us share in love together. And when some people are not being catered for, when the distribution is not getting some other people, they will talk. It's not because they are not righteous. Because you can't take your own and take my, to my own join your own. Is that not true? They will talk. It's not that they are sinner. It's not they don't have the money to buy the food in their house. And if you are somebody that always take your own, take other, please repent today. No, it's good we tell ourselves. We are in house here. This is church. If you can't tell the truth here, where else can we hear the truth from? Because some people are just, they are used to it, grappling, grappling, grappling. That's it for them. I was sitting with somebody one day, and the, the mother was also sitting. So it's three of us, and they were bringing the table forward. In my place, we were taught that when elders are with you, allow them to carry first. In fact, we are taught, when, no matter how they stir the soup, the meat will be your side. Big. That's the way we are taught. Whether small or big, the one way is that is beside you, you know, close to you. Big, don't stretch. <laughs> I also know that there's this proverb that uh, they say we're not men run That is, you use your head to. I don't know how that's true. <laughs> that you can open your white eyes clear <laughs> and use to choose. You know, meat in the you know, they put it and you look for it. Uh, so that day they wanted to serve us in church here. And the boy, your mother was sitting down there. I am with you, and I know this boy is one of those boys I used to carry when he was small. He was supposed to carry, and he looked. The one that had the mother supposed to carry that carry big chicken. He just put out like this and carry. It. <laughs> I said, Wow, in church. Boys, it's true. Let me read. It happened. They all they happen. We sit there. It's a real problem. And if it doesn't happen to the same family or those, somebody that can just bear it, it could be a problem. And that's what happened to these people. The unity 
the tension was placed on the unity and it was like, we need to do something. We need to do something. Thank God that in this case, the report got to the leader. In some cases, the pastor might not even know what is going on. And people keep murmuring, things are not working. You'll be just be walking, you just be say something's wrong somewhere. Things are not working. I charge you. Please, anytime you feel bad or you are not happy with anything, please can you get it to the leadership in this church? TVCBC run open door policy. Please pass it across. Pass it from your life group. If you know that life group will not, leader will not handle it, please. Pastor will always be sitting down there. Hallelujah. But you can also talk to me. Hallelujah. But in case my face looks too scary, I have somebody that I know that does this. Still now, if you still talk to him, no matter how you say it, he will accept you. You can say big mobility. He will take anything. Hallelujah. Please let's report. Don't go back and murmur because there could be a problem at the end of the day. Remember in the scripture, a lot of people were de destroyed because they murmur against the leadership God placed on them. I know that will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. God wants us to live in love, in unity. But when we don't take care of some things, the tension will be there. Hallelujah. So there was this challenge of unity in church community and they need to attend to it. They said, look, let us pick people that will attend to these things. So that the early Jews, the Grecian Jews will be happy. happy. These other people will be happy. Everyone will be happy. Hallelujah. Another challenge this morning is the challenge of rule and responsibility. The challenge of rule and responsibility. In verse 2, they said, the apostle said, look, it is not good for us. It is not desirable for us to leave the word of God and prayer to serve table. Everyone is with his own or our own responsibility. When God called you him, there's something for you to do. That's why he brought you in. And that's why in this church we believe in teamwork. So that when you do your own, and I do my own, everything will work together for good. Ours is to serve. To, to minister in word and to pray. Dickens, they are to serve the table. Every one of us, we have great responsibility. We need people to serve table, to take care of the Grecian Jews. We need people to take care of different things in the church here. We need to create people, we need to bring people off to take off responsibility. And I want to say this morning, in case you are here, you don't even belong anywhere. We know you have been part of this place. We love you so much. But it's better you belong somewhere. Hallelujah. Sorry, if you don't belong to any ministry team, can I just see your hands up? Be sincere to God, not me. You don't belong to anyone. Can I see your hands up? Can you clap for those who have raised up their hands? They are sincere. They are Christian. Hallelujah. But I challenge you. Before we go out of any of these doors this morning, Let's make the decision to join a team. Can we make a move and meet the ministry team leader of the group you want to join, or the one God is leading you to join, so that you can be part of it? It is sweet when of us, all of us, are doing the work together. It is sweet and less stressful when you do your part and I do my part. Anyone that says, I can do it, Lord, or the one would die before his or her time. It must train us. You want to do this? You want to do that? Do this? Do this together? I was part of a company. I visited a company one day, and one, one lady was complaining. He said, look, when they started this branch, I started this branch, and somebody just wants to spoil this branch for me. And when you say this, this, I said, look, this branch that you say you started, one day you will go, and this branch will remain. 
If the person is not doing it correctly, can you teach the person correctly? So that the person can learn. But if you think you are the only one that can do it right, ah. And that's why most of us, maybe because of the fear that if I give it to them, they will not do it right. Eh, because I release the grace, grace of teamwork into your life this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That all of us will all work together to achieve purpose in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. It's good to work together. I say we are deacons and pastors, they will trust. Deacons will say, What is he said? Is he not preaching? All of us can preach. No, I don't know whether you've heard it before. I've heard it so many times. They say, What well, we see? We'll pay salary and it will come here and be coming on talking. I say, God. Maybe because I'm a Christian, I always feel bad when I hear that kind of statement. But much more of recent, when I went to school, I would like to invite those kind of people to school to come and see what is going on there. Because when they bombard you with those assignments, and you don't sleep, and the next we follow, another person brings his own, you wonder what is going on here. One of the person in my class said one day, said, look, I thought when we just come here, we just lay hands on us, we just begin to preach. We didn't know that he would be learning like this. I said, hey, he never thought. You never start. Please, all of us have our calling and there's responsibility attached to it. God has given every one of us what I can do where you might not be able to do it. And what you can do, I may not be able to do it. I have great people that I respect in this church. When you see their humility, you wonder, ah, are these women be or they are angels from the great beyond? Because there are some things. I'm quiet too, but there are some things I, I can respond by in a soft way to say, I don't like what you are doing. But these people will just, I will just wonder, where is this grace coming from? Please, God has given you what it takes to serve here. And the responsibility is, look, do your part, let me do my part. All of us work together to achieve purpose. Not contesting God called the pastor in this place. He said, look, do this one. And the people said, look, we cannot continue to do the two together. Or unless this problem will always be there. We assign people to serve. But look, because we are doing other things, we cannot oversee. But now let's bring people that will be assigned to this job. You do this, you do this, you do this. All of us do our own part and we'll have the result at the end of the day. Hallelujah. And that's why I will say to drama group that I'm sorry that I couldn't make it yesterday. It's part of it. Sister Lucy, I hope I'm forgiven. Okay. You know, that because it's one of the passions. I'm always there acting. I enjoy it. But it will get you a time. If you want to do her, then be ready to go quickly. Because this flesh, you just be walking on the flesh. And the thing will just be going down and going down like that. You will think you have it. Everybody will be clapping for you. Hey, you are deceiving yourself. Please let us, Lord, support do our home path. These people notice and they know. They accepted the challenge. And they say, look, let us raise people. Let us raise office, administrative office that will attend to these people. And that's what we want to do. Hallelujah. And lastly, this morning is the challenge of contextual issues in ministry. We've seen the life of these people, the life of the Holy Church in Acts chapter 6. But why in here, the virtual community Baptist Church, why do we really need the key? Are we facing challenges? Are there internal challenges that are not here that we need to, to face? We need to admit so that we can attend to them too. Number one of them is this. We have aging digging. Sincerely, sincerely, I, I clap with it. You know, when you are clapping inside your hearts, for people like Babu Kereke, Momio Kereke, 
Mumimujume and the rest. At their age, doing all this thing that young people are supposed to be doing. Look, it is about nature. It's about the way God created it. When you get to a level, you need to slow down. You need to respect yourself. We need to apply common sense. We need them around. Unless you say we don't need them. But as long as we need them, we need to keep them. By reducing the load on their head. Could you imagine you ask daddy to go up like three times up there? If you want to do exercise, let him know that you want to do exercise. Not because you want church, you want to send him a message, you will just be going and coming down. And... The one that is climbing the house is enough if it's for exercise. Hallelujah. Let's admit this. And if we say deacon is by definition, by function, that we need people that are energetic, people that need to do things because growth is coming. Then we need to get people that will do the job. That we can just call and say, please, we need to be in Wumaya today. We need to be in Ogoja tomorrow. We need to be in Sokoso. I won't say Bono. <laughs> Hallelujah. We need people. Hallelujah. We need to admit it and we need to bring people in that will do the job. Number two, the bleeding numbers of deacons. From 2008 to now, you discover that a lot of deacons have left this church. Maybe by way of transfer, relocations, and the rest. The Babani, they are not here. Mr. Deaconess and Deacon and Deaconess. Abi, let me use it so that we can differentiate now. Deaconess. And Dickin, Abi Dickin and Dickness, Adekunle, Atiata, Farin Loi, a lot of them. Look at the front, how many are we seeing? And the job is growing. I signed the first service Sunday. I was trying to prepare for our victory. I had to come on Friday for a children review. I had to preach on Sunday. I was just looking at a lot of things. And one of our whole Dickin was engaged somewhere and just come here and say, uh, Pastor Kai, can you help me to do the naming and this? And I say, Kai, this one, uh, another thing. If they, if we have a lot of, the, the, it will have call another one because other ones are engaged. So we need more people so that we can solve that problem. Hallelujah. Another thing is ministry placement opportunity. We want a situation where when we bring people in, when there's fake and we bring other people. As a student of economics, I was told that if we want to employ, if we want to put people in position, they must be people that have extra capacity to grow. If you are bringing somebody in and the person will not grow, does not have that capacity to grow, don't bring the person in. Because people behind will not grow at all. But in this church, the system we run is that as we are moving people up, others should come in. Others should come in. And that's why we have the teamwork. Any team where the leader is not there again, you hand over and the team crumbles, then you've not done anything. We are to produce according to our kind. That you are leaving, somebody will be able to step in and do the same job. There are ministry opportunities, and people should feel it. As we are moving, as we are moving, other people should come in. Remember, we have great work ahead of us. Satellites will come, more will come. God will do it. It's not by anything, it's God's church. It's the one that will grow, it's the one that will build it, and it will do it because this is the season. But we also need to position ourselves ahead of that. So we need to bring people to place people in ministry opportunity. And finally, is the future expansion of ministry. We have four locations now. I see plenty of location coming. I see plenty of location coming. 
And within one, I see people going there to do the work of the Lord. And I see some of us doing the work, and the work will be greater than the number that is here. Are you getting it? The multiplication is coming, and we need to get ready for it. Not that we want to open a satellite somewhere and God say, well, I'm leading you to this place. Our problem will be, ah, who will go there? Okay, if we send this person there, who will do this job? We should not be cracking our head. That's why we need to prepare ahead of it. Get ourselves ready. So that we can get the job done and done very well. As we look at this one week, as we go through this series, I want to encourage us to get focused. What is God saying concerning this? If God is leading you as a person to say, I want to volunteer myself, you can do so. But it's what leading should be there. Because, you know, there's a way we can lead ourselves. Uh -huh. That's the way we can lead ourselves. And if the people are leading you and God is not leading you, can you kindly tell the people, God is not leading me, you are the one leading me. You know it's also possible. That people are saying, we want him, we want him. And God said, uh -uh. He said, why is it that men look at the face and go? Because he saw him, he said, ah, this one is the king. See how he looks like, macho, fresh, color. And God say, see this Mumu? <laughs> That's not the king. It's not by color. It's not by hiddenness. It's not by handsomeness or whatever. He said, the one I want to use is in the bush. He said, Bushman. God is depending on all of us for the great work ahead of us. He wants every one of us to be partaker. It's possible you're not a deacon. Or you might not be a deacon. But please, wherever you are, please serve very well. Let me borrow the word of a man that says, if you want to minister, minister very well. You know, deacon is minister. If you want to minister, minister very well. If you want to serve, serve very well. And that's what God is saying to us today. By way of Randy one, I want you to read this. I want you to check this together. Please, can you go to the last slide? So as we look at it together and close. He said, the ministry of the deacons in the local church is God's design to terminate unnecessary friction in his church. It's God's church, not our church. And our love for growth of the kingdom and total shepherding of the flock of Christ. That's the mind of God. And I want every one of us to key into this. It's God's idea. It's God's desire that all of us will be nourished. All of us will be blessed. But we need to put things in order and do things correctly. Can we bow our heads as we pray this morning? Thank you for listening to today's message. Believe you are blessed. If you are not born again, I would like you to pray this prayer of salvation. Lord Jesus, today, I surrender my life to you. I receive you to be my personal Savior and my Lord. I confess that you died for me. I confess that I cannot save myself. Therefore, today I put my trust in you. I receive you. I acknowledge you. And I thank you for saving me. Amen. If you have just said that prayer, congratulations, you are born again. For prayer or counseling, call or write number 36 Fleming Avenue, Rural Massey, PO Box 5570, Transamadi 500003, Port Harcourt, River State, Nigeria. Or telephone plus 234-844-83397 or plus 234-707. 1198093 or email info at myvictory today.org for more information on TBCBC 
visit www.mybigchitulay.org.